Welcome to the June 2nd, 2020 YOLO Amateur Radio Society Mount Vaca Amateur Radio Club presentation on amateur transmitter hunting. I'm Bill Ragsdale, K6KN, your guide on this adventure. T hunting is also called hidden transmitter hunting, bunny hunting, fox hunting, or amateur radio direction finding. It's fun, challenging, and skill building. In it, we use basic radio technology to locate a hidden transmitter. This sounds simple, but in a way it's magical. Using a simple components, we can find a six inch transmitter located in an area of say 200 square miles. Years ago, a ham would hide in the bushes or under a tarp or maybe in a culvert. He'd read from a magazine and taunt the other hams searching for him. Tonight we'll see the current technology. We have three general types of hunt. Local hunt is done on foot over an area of a square mile or two. Wide area hunts are done by vehicle with an area of up to a couple of hundred square miles, really. The most common hunting is done on two meters, but 80 meters is easier, especially for newcomers. It has fewer reflections and false signals. The contest form of hunting is referred to as ARDF, Amateur Radio Direction Finding. It's an international sport within ham radio. It features both VHF and 80 meter hunts. Check online for the details. ARDF is very challenging as you are hunting simultaneously for five transmitters in different directions in a minimum time. To set up an event, start by locating an event manager. It's better if he's had experience, but it can be a learning experience for all. You plan a tea hunt just as you would any other special event. A couple of months ahead, set the place, date, and time. Then promote the event in your club bulletin, website, and Facebook page. A note in the newspaper can draw in inactive hams or prospective members from within your area. Be sure to notify other ham clubs in the region, especially any tea hunt clubs. You'll need a transmitter with a power level suitable for your hunt, generally from 15 milliwatts to one watt. The participants will need an appropriate antenna, attenuator, and receiver. Train them on the use at a regular club meeting. If their equipment is limited, then form them into teams. Participants should have a second handheld to monitor a local repeater for late instructions and the closing of the hunt. Afterwards, you generally will gather for a debriefing and a social event. Years ago, the bunny would be a hidden ham reading from QST while the rest were hunting for him. Now we use a processor controlled transmitter with choices for tone patterns, on times, cycle times, and call sign. These are from Bionics in Las Vegas. They provide automated transmitters for hunting, APRS trackers, GPS receivers, and specialty antennas. The hidden transmitter power is generally in the milliwatt area, as too high a power level gives the close-in hunters an attenuation problem. Mark the transmitter with return information in case it's accidentally found. Hide it well. I once chased two kids for blocks that pulled my transmitter out of a tree. It's good to market electronic research test equipment so an accidental finder won't call the bomb disposal squad. We'll soon see better methods, but you can try putting an HT in a Pringles can or in front of a pie tin or behind your body to add some directionality and to reduce signal level. For the final location, you need a one inch antenna or probably no antenna at all. The problem is the very wide signal level range over miles down to feet. This method is frustrating and not very effective. The most common starting point in your tea hunting career would be a directional antenna, an attenuator, and a handheld transceiver. Plan on firmly mounting these parts rather than having them flop around loose. This is an aero antenna that stows nicely. Its big brother is great for ham radio satellite communication. There are four types of hunting antennas. A Yagi antenna is the most popular, either the type made from flexible tape measure or a rigid model, or one mounted on a mast on your car so your co-pilot can rotate it. The phase detection or Doppler method is fast and convenient, but needs special antennas and a signal processor. More about that later. An interferometer uses two verticals on a mast. It's very precise, but not portable. 80 meter hunts use a small loop antenna and a specialized receiver. A Yagi made from steel measuring tape is low cost and very portable. Look for its plans online. 
I use an Arrow 2 with rigid elements. It's high performance, but difficult when getting in and out of a vehicle. The most popular attenuator is the offset type. Compact, simple, and very effective. Here we see the schematic of an offset attenuator. U1 at the bottom left is a 5 volt regulator. X1 at the bottom right is a 4 megahertz oscillator. D1 at the top center is a mixer diode. As the DC bias on D1 is increased, a variable amplitude copy of the input appears at the output, 4 megahertz above and below the input frequency. This is the magic of heterodyning. Here's a picture of how it works. The hidden transmitter is on 144.80 megahertz at the top left. We listen on 148.80 at the top right. That is 4 megahertz above the transmitter frequency. Initially, there will be no signal at that frequency, as shown by the empty oval at the top right. As a 4 MHz signal is mixed in, a variable amplitude image will appear in your receiver, shown at the bottom right. You adjust the mixing to set the balance between signal and quieting noise. Here we see the gold standard of transmitter hunting, the Mark IV receiver from VK3YNG. It combines a VHF receiver, attenuator, range selection, and advanced signal processing. It costs about $180 and makes life much easier. It still uses a Yagi antenna, but does all the sensitivity adjustments. Here is a Doppler rig. The advantage is you have a continuous fix as you drive. No need to get in and out of the car. The four antennas mag mount on your auto rooftop. On your dashboard, you have a ring of LEDs. The lit LEDs point in the direction of the transmitter. You just drive in that direction. You probably have to search on foot once you're within about 500 feet. This set runs between $400 and $600 from various small makers. Check the internet for suppliers. Now we get to the serious part. When hunting, adjust your attenuator for the balance between signal and noise. Then find the direction of the strongest signal. Remember, a Yagi has some signal from its backside, but the front to back difference should be quite clear. If roadways permit, walk directly toward the maximum signal. More likely, you'll have to move at some angle. Then take another fix, then repeat until you find the bunny. During the hunt, you systematically scan left and right, adjusting your HT volume and the attenuator to hear a mix of the on-axis transmitter tone and off-axis noise. Here's a diagram of a video you'll see in just a moment. It explains the logic of what you're going to see. The green arrow at the bottom points in the direction of maximum signal, minimum noise. We start the hunt, but the house, the brown square, is in the way. So I walked about a block in the direction of the red arrow. Past the house, the signal was strongest to the left. So I turned there and continued to walk. About half a block later, the signal is still ahead, but to my right. So I continued ahead. Then the best signal shifted to my right and a bit behind. And I turned and walked in that direction. I'm walking directly toward the strongest signal. Sure enough, I find the transmitter. Let's see the actual video of this hunt. This video has been edited to save time.
Success, the transmitter's in the tree. In a real hunt, the transmitter is often camouflaged. Once I saw one in the body of a fake bird. Often, only the antenna shows. To make a hunt more difficult, the transmitter might be located near a metal surface to give reflections and false signals. In a competition, it's good form not to give away the transmitter location to anyone who might be nearby. For you geocachers, that means muggles. Wide area generally means hunting by automobile over miles, sometimes 20 to 30 miles. You need to plot your fixes using a map and compass. After three or four fixes, they should begin to converge on a location. Then you search on foot. As an alternative, the Doppler method lets you stay in your car and is much preferred on a hunt that covers many miles. Here is a simplified process for recording fixes on a map. Your Boy Scout experience will help here. Find the magnetic north pointer on your map. Here it's at the center bottom. Extend that line across the map, copying it several times. Then you align the map to north after placing it on the ground, not on your steel automobile hood. Adjust the map until its magnetic north lines are parallel to your compass needle. Position your antenna to find the estimated transmitter direction and draw its directional line on your map. Fix one appears here as the red line. Move some distance away at about a 45 degree angle to get a different perspective. It's less productive to move directly toward the hidden transmitter. Measure again and add another directional line. The blue line shows our fix number two. Notice the lines cross so you have a rough indication of the transmitter location. Move again and repeat. The green line marks our fix number three. We can move to the area where they cross. It is not this simple in real life. Multipath hills and metal buildings add difficulty. When you are confident, move into hunting by foot. Here is a map of an actual hunt in Fremont, California, run by the very active SF Bay Tea Hunters group. Getting in out of my car with a full-size Yagi was very inconvenient and reduced the number of fixes I could take. The Doppler users were done in 40 minutes. I took about two and a half hours. They were all enjoying coffee at McDonald's while I still searched. It all sounds so simple here, but in real life, it's much more challenging. You cope with multi-path reflections, tall buildings, roads going the wrong way, and hills. There's about a 100 million to one change in signal level from a transmitter 10 miles away to 10 feet away. We see why the antenna and attenuator combination is so essential. So why hold a tea hunt? Hidden transmitter hunting builds skills useful in locating a repeater jammer, or it could help in locating RFI near your shack. Plus you learn a fair amount of RF theory and practice. The social end of a hunt is rewarding, even for those who struggled on the hunt itself. The book Transmitter Hunting by Joseph Moel and Thomas Curley at 319 pages. It's still in print after 33 years. It's complete and still relevant. Its only weakness is not being up to date on the current Doppler technology and competition hunting. The book covers the origins and military history, a wide range of technique, equipment, organizing a hunt, dealing with mischief and malice, and much, much more. This last slide summarizes transmitter hunting information, antennas, transmitters, and receivers. It's been my pleasure to present this complete guide to hidden transmitter hunting. I hope you find it useful and informative to enhance your hidden transmitter hunting. 73 from Bill Ragsdale, K6KN.